G'day, Simon Evans. Thank you for joining another session of the uh, ARC Service Park. You've had an illustrious career, uh, winning four titles in uh, a few different brands. Um, out of all those four titles, which was the most memorable? Which was the most memorable? Always the first one. Uh, that's always the most memorable because it's usually the one you fought hardest for um, and it's when you're, you're still, I guess, cutting your teeth learning how to win championships rather than um, just driving flat out all the time. So, yeah, I think for me that was the most special one because it, it was just it was hard work. So that first title obviously is, is something special. I guess you uh, you have were a privateer for so long. Um, you obviously... Had some great great partners across the time. I think the memorable car for me growing up was seeing you in that Hella Subaru. But when you did join Neil Bates Motorsport and the Toyota team under the TRD banner, um, obviously it was a changing point in your career. What was it like? And I guess was it a sense of achievement that you'd uh, reached that factory goal? Absolutely. That, that was always the goal. And um, there was lots of opportunity at that time as well. So we were, we were quite competitive as privateers. Um, I think if we kept running as a privateer, we probably could have had a tilt at the championship as well, like actually been an outright contender. Um, we were learning so much at the time, but then to get the opportunity with Toyota and Neil Bates, um, that was, for me, it was the, the dream come true. Um, no longer did you have to put in the hours at night um, after work. And uh, to be honest, I didn't do heaps of work on my car. I had a good team behind me on the Heller car. But um, it was still organising and doing all the all the behind the scenes stuff, all the sponsor work, all that sort of stuff, um, which takes a toll um, when you're trying to run a business as well. Um, to then become a full time factory driver and getting paid, it was a big difference, and you can start focusing on all the other things that you never thought about before, which is like how to drive faster, um, try to keep in the car clean, and not not destroying the car. Uh, that was a big thing for me. Just um, speed was never an issue. It was making sure I got it to the finish. Um, so then I started focusing on that, um, which was good. But then that brought a whole new pressure because Toyota and, and Neil Bates expected you to perform every event. And they, um, you know, if, uh, if you're having a bad day, they wanted us to know why. And so you had to come up with the reasons why. And um, sometimes it's hard to work out why you're not having such a good day. So you've got to... Um, you just got to be on top of your game and, and, and be focused and um, and probably be, the biggest thing I learned was not to take too much baggage into the car um, to clear your head. Pretty easy for a concreter. And just just learn how to race um, uh, and not think about uh, something Katie said in the media, you know, in the week before and all those sort of things. So don't take all that crap into the car with you. Just jump in the car and just drive it. Um, I termed the phrase, uh, just take it one corner at a time. And in the old interviews, you would have seen me saying that a lot. Um, and that was just literally just a block for any of the, uh, can I say, bullshit <laughs> that came across from other drivers. Uh, Possum Bourne was really good at trying to get into your head, um, get you worrying about him all the time. Um, when, once, I, once I learned how to focus uh, and just worry about my job, it was then up to those drivers to worry about what I was doing. So that was... Oh, they were good times. There was obviously a lot of fierce rivalries back then, but who was probably the, uh, you know, I guess in your in your privateer days and then into the factory days, who was the mo- your most fierce competitor and who did you often have the, the tussles with, be it on the stages or mentally? <laughs> there was so many. <laughs> Scott Pedder was always hard. When he was on song, he was really hard to beat. Um, obviously, Cody Crocker um, is absolute legend. That guy could just, he was, he was like an ice man. He could just perform and perform and perform. And um, the, the way I worked out uh, with, with Cody was I just le- leave him alone um, and I just concentrate on trying to beat him. And when I was being consistently faster than him, that seemed to upset him more than anything. Uh, so rather than trying to play any mind games and or any of that sort of stuff. Um, obviously, Possum Bourne, um, he was... He was <laughs> As a driver, he was an asshole. <laughs> like he was so hard to race with. If you're going well, he'd come over and he'd uh, he'd lend you a bit of advice and stuff like that, and then he'd tell you how he, uh, you know, he'd had a couple of dramas and he wasn't really on song, or he's got the wrong tyres for the stage. And and again, that was as a young bloke, you, you took all that into this next stage with you. You're thinking about what Possum said to you and all that sort of stuff, and then you you drop concentration and you start making mistakes. Um, after a while, I learned how to get around that. And then um, 
and you just ignore what he says. I end up, funny thing I used to do is I used to just basically lock myself in the car. Um, and so they come up, possum would come up to my window and he'd just stand there and have the window closed, locked, wouldn't even talk to him. <laughs> just don't give him a chance. But, you know, hello, I know. I guess Kangas was good fun to race with. He was hard work. Um, as again, when he was on fire, it was very hard to beat. Um, you know, there was just, there was, there was lots. So Ed Ordinsky, uh, we had some great tussles with Ed. Um, I think some of my favourite times uh, racing against Ed Ordinsky was when we both had a bad day and we're sitting outside the top three, top four. So we used to just have uh, beers on each stage and um, <laughs> worked quite well because whenever we started the beer bets, we all started winning the stages outright. So, <laughs> so that was quite fun. Um, it was, yeah, they were, they were good times. So that's good to look back on and, uh, and talk about them. And look, in that time, I guess you've, you've built a reputation for being very flamboyant uh, in your driving style, which most of the time worked for you. Sometimes it didn't go all so well. You've had a, a couple of big ones. What's the most memorable and what was the biggest that sort of made you stop and, stop and think about it for a bit? Probably, to be honest, the biggest one for me was when um, we had a drama in Queensland and we ran off a bridge and I flipped end for end into a river and through the trees and... Um, that one was it was hard for me. I ended up I busted my toe. Like my toe was pointing back at me, and um, I, Sue had taken a pretty big hit. She was seeing stars, and uh, we had to get the ambulance in for her. And um, yeah, I don't know that one just not, not me about a fair bit. Obviously, the, the big accident where I broke my leg um, that was huge down in Tasmania in two thousand four. So it was first season with Toyota, and we were leading the championship, and um, just, it was the repeat use of a stage and it was about our sixth time running down this part of the stage. And so you got to know the stage pretty well and we were just holding it flat through everything, um, going at ridiculous, just basically walk, walk factor through all the corners and then it, all the gravel was gone off the corner and there was a bit of rain and it was just greasy as because there was no gravel left and it was like polished. And we hit that corner and just went straight to the outside, hit this stump. And in the middle of the crash, I could see Chris Atkinson's car. He'd hit the same stump as well. He was a car in front of me. Um, but he got a bit further down the road and I took it in on my door. He hit it with the rear quarter panel. Uh, I took it in on my door and it broke my, my femur and um, knocked me about a bit. And Chris ran up to the car and he, first thing he said to me is like, he looks at me and he goes, oh, you're alive. <laughs> he, thought I, he thought I'd be dead for sure. Um, yeah, no, anyway, I think there's footage of me telling him I was hurting, hurting bad. And, uh, yeah, the, uh, the ARC did a thing and uh, we had doctors there within, I think, nine minutes or two, ten minutes or something. We had a doctor on the scene. Go on TV for all the wrong reasons, Rob. Right? Uh, 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 far out. And I'm trying not to swear. That was pretty good. It was just a broken leg. Just a broken leg. So it was certainly I've seen some photos of it and it looked looked rather large. I guess we'll fast forward now and you came, we, we, we finished with the Toyota era and we you went through a few running some Evos and uh, cars. We ended up when the championship went to a two-wheel drive and you you piloted them as the two from with rally school. Uh for a few years, and I guess that was almost going back to the beginning for you in two-wheel drive. Uh, you were very competitive, very fast. It's almost like you, you enjoy driving uh, those two-wheel drive cars more than the four-wheel drive cars. What was that like? I think at that point, I'd spent more time in a front-wheel drive car than I had in a four-wheel drive car throughout my driving career. So the front, I, I find front-wheel drive awesome. Um, people say they, they're boring, they're, 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 you know, they don't ever say they're slow, but they say they're boring to watch and... They're not as spectacular and all that sort of stuff. But I don't know, every time I drove one, no one complained about how spectacular I was. Um, I found them to be just super responsive. Like, um, it made sense to me that the, the, the cars go where you point them. Um, and when you stay on the power, it, wherever you're pointing that steering wheel, that's where the car's going. So the biggest thing with a front-wheel drive I found is that you just got to stay on the power. Um, I left for break, but I stay on the power the whole time. <laughs> Hard on the car, but fast. And um, I don't know. I just I've always loved driving them. I think I found them easy to drive. 
Um, the biggest thing I found is if you were good in a rear-wheel drive car, it took you a long time to adjust to front-wheel drive cars because all the those moments that you have when you're in a rear-wheel drive car where you're sliding and you're running wide on a corner, your instant reaction is to get out of the throttle and then turn in uh, to avoid whatever you're going to hit. When a front-wheel drive, you've got to turn in and, and get on the power um, and that's hard for people to learn. Uh, I, I didn't have a problem with it. No, you certainly didn't. So out of all the, the front-wheel drive cars that you drove, what's the, what's the standout one? That's an easy one, um, the Golf by far. We ran the Golf 3 here in Australia in 99. That was pretty cool. Uh, but when I got to do the Asia Pacific and the Golf 4, uh, that was like the difference between stepping up of, like from a, um, an R5 car to a World Rally car. Um, the Golf 4 was amazing. It had 300 horsepower. It revved to 10,000 RPM. Um, yeah, it was as light as it could be and as strong as it could be. Uh, we did the whole Asia Pacific season and we really didn't change anything on the car other than brake pads. Uh, it, was, it was pretty cool. When we sold it, the guy who bought it wasn't real happy because it was pretty worn out. <laughs> you just said then, the, obviously, the, the, uh, Tom, that you did the APRC and we've been speaking to a couple of people, um, Chris Atkinson, Cody Crocker, who have all done that, uh, that next natural progression to the APRC. What was it like for you? Uh, obviously, you're a, an Aussie bloke. Um, you uh, went over there to some foreign countries. Um, you know, Cody was telling us some, some unique stories from China. How was that experience for yourself? <laughs> I, I always came back hungry. <laughs> was, <laughs> there wasn't much food there that I liked to eat. So um, when I raced in China, they worked out that I liked KFC. So the team that I was driving for, bought a whole box of KFC and sat there for four days of the whole event and I just kept eating burgers out of that box for the four days. <laughs> it was, uh, look, it was different. Um, I love the challenge of rallying and, uh, and rallying in the Asia Pacific is a challenge. So uh, it definitely takes you to wit's end sometimes, um, but the rewards were fantastic. Like Asia, the... Yeah, it's rallying in Asia Pacific is very similar to here. Um, the all the locals really love it, and everyone was friendly. Like you know, Thailand, um, China, and all that. People were great. It was good fun. Um, I got because I got to do it in a front wheel drive, and our pace was pretty hot. We were quite often in the outright podium with the car. Um, it blew away all the local guys, like the local Thai champions and all that sort of guys. They couldn't believe that I was in a front-wheel drive golf and beating their Group A Evo 3s and 4s and 5s that they had. Um, they, quite often we'd pull in at service and everyone would come over and stick their head under the back and make sure that there was no diff in the car at the back, at the rear of the car. Um, I thought that, I took that as the ultimate compliment. And I guess the, the Evans name is obviously synonymous with rallying in Australia. You've won you know, some titles yourself along with Eli. Is there, uh, obviously there's a, a competition between the both of you, I guess, internally in the family on who's who's the better driver. But we are going to see either of you, I guess, more so yourself, come out to maybe get try and get that one more championship and level the score. <laughs> uh, I'd love to. <laughs> uh, I'd even get fit again to do that. Um, but <laughs> I don't know. It t- it, the boys up front, they're going fast. I was, uh, I got to drive last year there with Les Walton and um, I was pretty happy with my pace and it, it was a good pace and but I still wasn't quite quick enough um, you know to take it to the outright boys so uh, you know a bit of time and a, probably a little bit of fitness might help but I w- I'd love to do it I'd love to race my brother again um, we do have there's a lot of banter between us and uh, also a lot of respect um, and I think that's why I love racing against him because uh, I know he's, he's a hard competitor. Um, but it is great fun racing your brother. But I, don't know, I think we damaged too many cars and Dad said enough. So, <laughs> And now you obviously we see you quite regularly in the side-by-side championship. Uh, it looks like a hell of a lot of fun. Um, is that the plan again this year when the world gets back to normal? Or? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Um, we're going full steam ahead with all the side-by-side stuff and Polaris and um, we were going to be doing the, the full Australian off-road championship as well this year. But um, we'll do whatever 
happens now. So we'll see. But uh, look, look, Polaris is a coming. They, they every year they get better and better and stronger and faster. And it won't be too long before um, I'd like to take one out in a rally and see how fast we go because. Uh, Another one I've got sitting in the garage right now is pretty quick. <laughs> It'd be good fun.